Before we get started, we just want to say thank you to 7 Artisans for sending us the Black Mist filter for review. But we're not paid to say anything besides our own opinions and 7 Artisans does not get to see this video before it is published. Let's get straight to the point. I took the 1 8th Black Mist filter to a street dance festival and I was using it with my Sony a7 IV and a 24-70mm f2.8 lens. I was very surprised because the results looked very nice. The filter was able to remove the digital sharpness of modern day cameras and still maintain enough contrast of the image, which is awesome. When I'm using a black mist filter, I don't know about other people but I mainly want the filter to make the image more film-like instead of video-like. That is usually done by smoothening each pixel so the transition between different shades of color will be smoother. This is usually not a problem on super expensive cameras like the Airy Alexa, but for consumer cameras, using a black mist filter definitely helps. When I was filming the street dance festival, it was a super bright and sunny day and the dancers were directly facing the sun. Without a black mist filter, the brightest part of the subject's face will have too much contrast compared to the darkest part, and that is usually what a cheaper looking image is in the viewer's eyes. A better looking image usually has smoother transition and less contrast. With the 7 Artisans black mist filter and directly lit subject, the highlights roll off was very smooth considering how harsh the sun was. When the sun is super harsh, usually the brightest part of the image will easily become a patch of white area, and it is not recoverable on most of the consumer cameras. Again, only super expensive cinema cameras can do that. After filming for a couple of years, I learned that the most important thing to me on a camera is not the resolution, the dynamic range, or the low light capability, but the bit depth of the image. That's why high-end cinema cameras like Arri or RED cameras have 16-bit of colors. With a black mist filter, I can kind of make a 10-bit footage look like it has a little higher bit depth. That is also why movies look like movies if it was filmed with a cinema camera and videos look like videos if it was filmed with a consumer camera. The digital sharpness and low color bit depth are some of the biggest reasons. When I was using the 7 Artisans black mist filter, I was able to lower the exposure to protect the highlights without worrying that the blacks are being crushed because the light is sipping into the darkest part of the image and lifting the blacks. This is very important because it compresses the image and gives you a lot more flexibility in post with protected highlights and shadows. One thing that I personally don't look for in a black mist filter is the blooming highlights effect, especially when the camera is facing a bright light source. It definitely looks cool if you are trying to achieve that specific look, but most of the time I think it is too dreamy. The 7 Artisans 1 8 black mist filter doesn't have too much blooming effect, which is great. When I was facing the sun, the filter didn't wash out the image too much and still maintained a lot of details and contrast in the image, and that is a very important feature to consider when getting a black mist filter. Let's talk about the biggest selling point of the 7 Artisans black mist filter. It is the cheapest black mist filter I've ever seen. It is only $42 for an 82mm 1 8 strain filter. That is one third of the price of the Tiffin Black Pro Mist and half the price of the budget KNF black mist filter. And that is absolutely amazing. I have used both the Tiffin and KNF black mist filters before, and I really don't think they are worth $100 or $40 more than the 7 Artisans filter when it comes to performance. You can literally get a 1 8 a quarter and a half strength of the 7 Artisans filter with the price of one Tiffin Black Pro Mist. Don't get me wrong, I think the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filters are great by keeping the darkest part of the image black while giving you the mist effect, but I really think it is way too expensive for just that. If you have the budget for them, I'm happy for you, seriously. Another pretty interesting thing about the 7 Artisans Black Mist filter is the thickness. It is definitely the thinnest Black Mist filter I've ever seen. It is even thinner than a UV filter. I'm not sure if it is important, but maybe if you like stacking filters, it can be useful to you. Now I'll be showing you some side-by-side -side comparisons of the 7 Artisans 1 8 black mist filter with and without the filter, so you can decide if you like the effect or not. By the way, you are looking at the effect the whole time during this A roll of the video. All right, so the first video that I'm showing you guys was filmed by myself at home basically with and without the black mist filter. This clip is without the mist filter, the black mist filter. As you can see the contrast is quite high 
and the darkest part of the image is still quite dark. I just did some basic color grading on this footage and you will see the same color grading applied to the one with the black mist filter. The hardest part of filming this too is to repeat what I was doing when the filter was on and off, but I guess I'm doing a pretty good job. <laughs> And now this is with the black mist filter filming exactly the same thing, same lens, same focal length, same angle, and hopefully similar kind of action. As you can see here with the black mist filter, everything is lifted, the shadows are lifted, some, everything is kind of misty. And the good thing about this filter, as I said before, is this filter does not give a really strong halation onto the image, so not everything is kind of bloomy and not everything is too dreamy so i really like it you can see that especially here where the shadows are being lifted you can see the details in the shadow compared to the one without the black mist filter now i'll try to put both videos side by side so you guys can see the difference between having the black mist filter and without the black mist filter and i'll let you guys be the judge Here's another example of with and without the black mist filter when you're filming. Here I have a key light shining onto the hat and the color chart, and this is without the black mist filter. You can see that the contrast is really high. I did not do any color grading on this footage. I just did a basic Rec. 709 conversion, so convert the x log 3 footage from my Sony a7 IV into this Rec. 709 color space. You can see that at the waveform graph right here that everything is kind of stretched out because the contrast is quite high and this is without the black mist filter if i put the black mist filter on focus on this chart right here you can see that everything is compressed because the contrast is lower and that can be a good thing or a bad thing depends on the look that you're trying to achieve to me it's always better to have a more compressed footage to work with so you can stretch it however you want in post. So this is with the black mist filter, without the black mist filter, the graph will get compressed with the black mist filter. And you can also kind of see it in the factor scope at the top right here that everything gets compressed as well because with lower contrast, that means the color is going to be desaturated as well. So this is without the black mist filter. This is with the black mist filter, without, with the black mist filter. As you can see here, we don't have that much color shifting going on. That is a good thing because some filters, they do have like a color tint, but with the Seven Artisans 1 8 black mist filter, I don't really see any color shifting. You can tell by looking at the center point of the vector scope, if there is a color shift, the center point will shift. So this is without the filter, with the filter, without the filter, with the filter. Everything just get desaturated and the contrast is lower compared to without the black mist filter. And now I'm going to turn on this LED panel light on the right hand side so you guys can see how bloomy the effect is with and without the filter. And I try to set the light as low as I can so it's not blowing out. But you guys, uh, you guys should just fall, uh, focus on how much this light source is spilling onto the hat and the chart. So this is without the filter. If I turn on the LED panel, this is how strong the halation is without any filters basically so it's not as strong it's just a light source so it's not going to give you any blooming effect this is without the filter and i'm going to show you guys the image with the filter again if you guys want to you can take a look at the vector scope and also the waveform monitor 
to see if the image get more desaturated and also the contrast should be lower even with a brighter light source. So this is without the filter, this is with the filter. The halation is quite strong in this image, um, but when you are filming outdoor, I did not notice that much halation. But this is of course because the LED panel was directly shining into the lens. So this is probably as strong as you can get. And this is with the filter. I don't think it's that bad because I can still see a lot of details in the shadows with the filter on. So this is with the filter. This is without. This is with the filter. And this is without the filter. Hopefully this test will show you guys a little bit more of a practical example of using the 7 Artisans 1 8 black mist filter. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the 7 Artisans black mist filter. To be honest with you, I think it is a very attractive option compared to all the other black mist filters on the market. It is cheap and effective, which is usually my preferred way to film. I'm so glad that 7 Artisans are selling these filters at such a great price so more filmmakers can get their hands on them. If you're wondering what size and strength of the filter you should get, my suggestion is to get the biggest one so you can adapt it to your lenses using step up rings and the 1 8 strength to start with because it is a pretty strong creative effect. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. What is your favorite filter to use? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.